Today what we're going to do is bumping, drawing. Drawing could be several different aspects. Drawing could make a toe weight draw to get your pucker out of your stock and forge it. Drawing to get some length. And then fullering because those three things are kind of the, they all have pretty much the same effect. You're upsetting material, you're drawing material out, or you're blowing material out. And that's what your fuller does. Fullering. What happens is when you fuller, you drive the fuller in, the outside edge of the blade of the fullering pushes material down and out. So when you push material down and out, it basically lowers the outside edge. So in order to fuller correctly, you have to upset it, which is called hemming. Hemming is an act of, so to speak, pre-wrecking your stock. You are lifting it up and knocking it in. From the top side, it gives the illusion that your fuller would be fine, but if you look at this end to this end, the fuller goes in, and when the fuller drives in, it usually goes a little coarser or to the inside web of the stock. When you forge anything, it, it blows out or expands where it makes contact with the object. So your hammer and the anvil, you get an hourglass design. You see some people forging their shoes and they get a ripple down the center of the shoe. That's from forging and getting that hourglass and then not forging it back out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a simple hind three-quarter fuller shoe and show all the steps of the fullering, the hemming, and then the bumping. Twelve inch piece and I basically have a third of the toe heat heated up. I want to keep my tongs either in line with me or straight away from me. I want to go straight through the stock coming from once it starts to bend I want to straighten it up right away. As it cools off I want to start hitting a little bit harder constantly straightening it up. You can see how I'm straightening up the stock so that I can... If you're not upsetting, you're just bending it. All that happens is bending. Of heat, but this is the best time to get some material in there because it doesn't bend, it upsets. I take the ruler, I got almost an inch in there. When I'm upsetting, I'm keeping it straight. I'm coming straight from my eye. You can lean the stock slightly back towards you, because if you're not as tall, you can lean it back and still get it to hit the material, the animal just as hard. For the toe bend, we have a hind toe bend. You can see the material from right about here to here is thicker all the way through. That's from our bumping. We bump the material, and then what we do is now we have enough material to where we can scribe with the, with the scribe. These scribe is about a little bit over an inch and a quarter. What we'll do, Come in about a third of the way and leave a mark. Can't seem to mark. Come in about a third of the way and leave a mark. This is how I'll have set up. You can see I still have a lot of thickness here. 
This allows me to forge and neck it down to my fullering. The next thing we'll do is show how we hem for the fullering. We've already got the heel on it. If you ha don't know how to make a heel, look at one of the heel making videos. All right, we're gonna put it on the sweet spot of the horn where I make contact and my fuller and it's just on the top. This is so I don't put any marks on the inside edge of the stock. I'm holding it to where it's, it's firm and it's not tilted either way, straight up and down to the horn. I'm gonna drop the heel of my hammer and start my hemming. Start my hemming, I don't go, I pull the material this way and I don't go to the back edge. I get this material started and then I come up here. I have a gap back here so I don't put a notch on the inside of my branch and I finish it off. You can see, if you can come up here on top. You can see how I've, I've upset the material. It leans up and in. I need to make me just a little bit nicer line. So I come up here. Then I come back over here. And blend everything together. Now if you can see, the pucker goes up and in, and I have a nice straight line to follow right there. I'll take my fuller, starting from the back, small overlapping blows. My line is parallel to the inside line. The, ups, the hemming gets less and less as I get to the heel because as I bring my fuller out of the depth, I'm not pushing as much material back out. So from my heel nail back, my hemming gets less and less because the fuller comes up and out from the heel nail back. Inside branch, I'm gonna come, I'm even, contact. I start my marking here. The reason I haven't got a heel on there yet is because I'm going to come all the way across, come through, and now I'm safing it as well. And I come over the edge and down and around. I finish my heel by going around the inside edge. Now I flatten it on the foot surface to get my width back again. And again, I come up here again and I do the same thing. That makes sure I don't have any marks on the inside edge. I come here and I drop my hand and I go all the way through to the heel. You can see I've got the hemming goes all the way through because after the heel nail the hemming works as safing. And I flatten it back out on the back side because that enhances the weight bearing. It smashes, it expands where I hit it with a hammer, but it doesn't take away from my safing. Come back in here and clean this edge up. Now you can see I have a line all the way down. I get my fuller. And I mark my line in there. At this point, I have 
more material on the outside than the inside because I'm going to go around the wing of the coffin bone and come in and we're going to have more of a pronounced heel quarter on the lateral side than on the medial side. Okay, does it focus? Yeah. I got my horn, my tongs to where they're pointing towards the ground. I put the horn where the heel nail is. I keep the branch above parallel to the ground and I hit pulling towards me and I push with my tong hand. I always keep the tip of the branch above parallel to the ground and sweep it over. You can see I'm done shaping. Doesn't take a lot of force. Get my fuller. Small overlapping blows. Show the top of it here. There you go. You can see how the fuller is pushing material back out. Now you can see I'm still above. If you, if you look down, I still have more height on the outside edge of the stock. When I'm trying to fuller, it's like laying bricks. You make different passes all the time at different places to overlap your blows to where it looks like one tool stamped that in all at the same time. You can see now my section is a little closer to the bumped up that I put in there. I've got more material on the inside than I have on the outside. When I say it's just everything's been pulled. So what I would like to do is actually forge it. So we'll, this is what we call drawing or forging. I'll put a little heat on it. Alright. We want to get everything flat, so it would be like if you took a piece of clay, I want to take and smear my thumb on the inside and make sure I've got no sole pressure and everything is well forged. I want to come in with overlapping blows and come in and just go ahead and forge everything nice and flat. I'm going to blend it from the toe, come all the way through. You can see how it puts a nice iron finish on the shoe nice and smooth I'm ready to head stamp I'll head stamp the same angle as I would drive a nail into that foot boom 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 the widest part of the foot and then split the difference you can see on the back side now I have puckers again, so I want to come in and iron it out again. Overlapping blows, and then hemming blows. Come here, overlapping blows. Cleaning up my shoe. Ease up because I haven't distorted the material in the back as much. Cleaning up my edges. Got everything flat. Your pritchel is just one or two hits. At the same angle you would drive a nail. We'll do the other side now. Pointing towards the ground, above parallel to the ground, the branch comes around, I'm pulling towards me and I'm pushing down with my tongs. That was a little bit too low, so I'm going to push it up where I have a gap where it was too low and then just bring it around. Doesn't take much to bend a quarter bend. Take my fuller. 
slightly pulling inward with my hammer as I'm hitting. The stock is blown out, but now it's not very flat. I'll just get a little heat. Coming out, overlapping blows to iron it out. Enough heat to make it user friendly to the bottom of the foot. You can see it's all nice and shiny because it's all cleaned up, it's forged down. Take my toenail. The same angle at which I would drive a nail. The widest part of the foot. Then split the difference. I'll bring it back, I'll flatten everything back up. Coming up here I want to make full contact on the horn and I'm just sweetening up the edge. Forging it out, making contact, cleaning up that edge, any sharp edges, blending everything together. Pritchell, same angle as the nail going in, just a few quick hits. We've got more of a pronounced outside heel quarter. We've got a safe off edge to where it leans in to where when a horse is just sitting there swatting flies or messing around the wash rack, they don't sit there and cut the inside of their foot. And we've got basically to test your work at home with the golden means, we've got the widest part of the foot is where our heels end up. The short side of the measurement goes to the long side. That's where, these are just things to keep your eye focused on your proportion of your hind shoe. Remember, please spay and neuter your parakeets. Thank you very much.